Good morning, happy Wednesday, everybody. It's time for Baldur's Gate 3. And now, officially, Baldur's Gate 3 is an award-winning game. Not just an award-winning game, but they did a clean sweep of the Game Awards, practically. Uh, even winning Best Multiplayer, which was astounding to read. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's time to head back into the world of Baldur's Gate. Still in Act 1, yeah. 15 broadcasts later, still in Act 1. I believe today we are going to go to the Githyanki Krish. Or Krish, the Krish. The Githyanki Kresh. Because um, we need to get that resolved for Lizelle's story. And then I think the only thing left in Act 1 that we haven't done is the Grandma. I don't know if we'll do that. I think what... Uh, the reason we skipped the Grandma last time was because the entire area was just poisoned. And I couldn't even move through the area without getting all of my characters killed. Uh, and I don't really know if we've discovered a way to get around that yet, so maybe I'll just skip the grandma. But if you guys really want me to try the grandma again, we'll try it. Depending on how long the Get Yankee Crush thing lasts. Is it going to take the entire four hours? That's the thing that I've discovered about uh, Baldur's Gate 3. Every little side passage we go down takes up an entire broadcast. We end up finding something that turns into a huge thing, and then it opens up into an enormous thing giving us a huge quest, and it just takes up the entire broadcast, and maybe two. <laughs> so will it take up all of the entire broadcast today? We'll see. I'd love to just go over to Moonrise Towers now that we've discovered it, but I'd also hate to think that I missed something that I can no longer do again. And that's another thing about the game that I'm a little frustrated about, is that we can't go back to previous acts once we complete them. At least according to chat, that's what chat has told me. Uh, and I trust you all. So, oops. Hold on, I forgot to update uh, Twitch. There we go. Just got to remember. Changed my workflow. Uh, the Wiz on Twitch says, Hey, Ox, I know it's not Starfield. I know you're collecting snow globes. On Mars, there is one not available in books. The Face of Mars. Thank you, The Wiz. I actually spent about 30 minutes during a broadcast a long time ago trying to find it, and I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, so I'll have to try again someday. We are live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Good to see everybody on uh, uh, Facebook today. Roman and Sam finally solved my technological problems that were keeping me from broadcasting on Facebook. Good to see everyone on Twitch. And, of course, wonderful to see all of the regulars and the members and the Patreon supporters on YouTube today. Slatty Bartfast, The Magic Q, Laura Elstad, Mr. Jocked, Zombie Elf... A retro wave and 444 jersey, Mr. Virus, Alien Face, Cat5, Elliot, and it's Vince M in the chat today with the first super chat who says, uh, Afternoon Ox, hope you and the family are well. Christmas is almost here. I'm looking forward to the stream. Thank you very much, Vince. Christmas is almost here. My kids are counting down the days. <laughs> Every day. It's how many days until Christmas, Dad? How many more days until Christmas? I got them an advent calendar. I've even got a little uh, timer clock. It's like an old wooden uh, German-style peasant house with little numbers in it that counts down the days for Christmas. And they still ask me. I'm like, you kids, no math. Like, adding and subtracting. There's the advent calendar. There's the German clock. Figure it out. But now it's how many more days till Christmas, Dad? <laughs> They're both really, really excited. Alt Grendel says, Chat says that the lockout doesn't start until Act 3. Really? 
Is that the case? Really? So I can go to Moonrise Tower and come back and do all of the grandma stuff? Okay. Well, then maybe we'll do that. I mean, I do want to do the Githyanki crash. I don't want to get too far into the plot without um, making Lizelle happy because she's just angry and pissed at me no matter what choice I make. So I figure I can use this opportunity to rack up some positive companion affinity with Lizelle if we get the Githyanki crash, or at least we resolve the situation there. And then maybe we'll go to Moonrise Tower, especially if we can come back later and do the grandma thing later. Okay, cool. Okay, now chat is saying that I don't think you can come back. Guys, make up your mind. Listen, listen. Discuss it amongst yourselves. Make up your minds. Figure out whether or not I can come back after going into Moonrise Tower and then let me know. Let me know your finalized consensus. That way I'm not confused. Odd X on Twitch says, there's a certain point in Act 2 where there's no going back, but it's obvious and chat will let you know. Okay, so it's not... So it is in Act 2, but it's not when I go into Moonrise Towers. It's later? I'm just going to play the game. Let's get to the game. All right, let's do this. Acid Rain says you get a message when you hit a point of no return. I see. Well, we haven't gotten there yet. All right, where are we? Here. That's right, we had just defeated that huge, awful boss. We got a bunch of, uh, loot and stuff. Yeah, Grim Skull Helm and Adamantine Splint Armor, and then Adamantine Scale Mail. So Shadowheart really uh, won out from that whole thing. She got a bunch of great armor. Karlak got some good armor as well. It's been so long. Listen, I gotta, I gotta deal with my inventory. I, I just gotta deal with my inventory. Gonna go to camp, I'm not gonna rest and all of that. I'm just gonna store all my crap. And I know I could do it from my inventory, but I want to vi visually see what's going on. All right, traveler's chest. Oh, jeez, what? It all goes here? Greg Williams says, hey Ox, why are pirates called pirates? I don't know, they just are. Also, did you see the Fantastic Studios closed down yesterday after the scam that was from Tuesday's game the day before? What are your thoughts? I did see that. Uh, I mean, listen, at this point, it's useless to, to ask for my thoughts because they mirror pretty much the entire communities. Uh, in short, I'm, I'm just frustrated that anyone fell for this scam to begin with. Like, we've known about this. Even I, who am not into zombie apocalypse shooters, I knew about this. I knew that the game was a scam. And I, I didn't wishlist it. I didn't even watch the original trailer when it came out. But just being aware of it, I knew that it was a scam. 
So how did people buy it? Like, how did people sit down and think, huh, all of this news and information about this game sure makes it sound like a, stan a scam. You know what I want to do right now? I want to give them 60 bucks. I just don't know how people fell for it. I, I, I can understand YouTubers buying it because they wanted to use it to make content. That, okay, fine. You want to make a video about why it's such an awful game? 10 reasons why this game is a scam, and you want to pay them 60 bucks for that privilege? Fine, I get it. But to play it for enjoyment? To pay $60 knowing that it's got a two-hour tutorial specifically designed to make it so that you can't return it later? I don't understand how people fell for it. Um, it's a troubling indicator for, uh, for the entire industry. I, I, I just... What do we do to prevent stuff like this from happening again? Consumers need to be protected from wasting their money on all of this stuff. They also need to become more savvy because it's not really up to everyone else to protect them from making silly decisions with their money. Um, they just need to become more savvy. How do we educate consumers so that we're, as a group, much more savvy? But that said, gamers in general are one of the most savviest consumers out there. Except for mobile gamers, we'll just... If you're a mobile gamer, you're in your own category. But but r other gamers, real gamers, <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. Real gamers um, tend to be a pretty savvy consumer set, right? So they know what they're getting into. They usually research before spending their money. And yet even so many of them were scammed into spending this huge amount of money on a, on a clearly scammed game. So it's just frustrating, and I don't really know what the best solution is to getting around that. Uh, okay. Where was I? Ah. Here we go. Um, okay, so I'm, fr I'm frustrated with my inventory management, right? Because this is my traveler's chest. And it's so small. Can we open this up a little bit? The chest itself is so tiny. Do I get another container? Is that my only container? Well, for crying out loud. Oh. Dog pants through a ball held firmly in his mouth. There's a ball in the dog's mouth. Okay, what's that doing in there? Uh, we could wrestle the ball from him. We could use sleight of hand to distract him with one hand and slip the ball. Or we could try animal handling. Uh, animal handling is a four. Sleight of hand is a three. Strength is a nothing. All right, we'll use animal handling to encourage him to drop the ball. It's gotta be a 15. Uh, let's do friends. Total bonus plus four. Yeah, let's do that. No, let's do that. Hey, seven. No. Oh, I see. Just barely, holy cow. He relinquishes the ball. It is well chewed and slick with drool. Well his done, eyes boy. crack the ball avidly. He shuffles on his paws, ready to chase after it. Uh, okay, let's pet him. We don't have an option to throw the ball? We can't play fetch with him? Scratch's tongue lolls out happily, his tail wagging even faster. Item received, Scratch's ball. The exterior of this toy ball is tough with tooth marks. What? Should I be talking with him? Speak with animals. Hope you're keeping well, friend. And we can just pet. Okay, well, we can't play fetch. Maybe that will have greater significance later. 
Julian Z says, hello, Ox. Good to see you. Hope you're well. Thank you very much, Julian Z. I am doing well. Hope you are as well. Laura says, Oxhorn, you can return to Act 1 from part of Act 2, but some quests slash dialogue may be changed or unavailable. Not sure which things exactly, though. Okay, thank you, Laura. That doesn't really clarify things. Well, it, it basically tells me that I still really need to get... I need to get everything done that I want to get done now before I move on. Pavel says, Ox, there's a draggable right down corner to expand the open chest box uh, window. I see. Thank you, Pavel. I'll try that. Greg says, click on the ball, then use the throw option. Is that what we're going to do? All right. All right. Um, throw. Hey, buddy. Item received, Scratch's ball. I wonder if we could use this. Like, is there a... Well, I mean, if we could only use it in camp. Is there, like, a, a secret part of camp? That we can't get to, but the dog might be able to get to? Or is this just for fun? I gotta say, it is fun. Like I'm, I'm, I'm having fun playing fetch with the dog. Very well. All right. Well, I'm not seeing like any holes or. Let's go down here real quick. Okay, well that was fun. Let's go, let's figure out our inventory. Let's go back to this chest. I don't want to make it longer, I want to make it wider. Okay, so I guess my frustration is that I wish I had more than one chest so that I could organize all my stuff. Because we've got camp food items thrown in here along with equipment, which is not ideal. Let's uh, get rid of all of the books. Can we sort by uh, type? Grimforge, a history. Send to camp. Hey, so that's how that works. Okay. Uh, High Cliff Blueprints. Uh, send to camp, I guess. I know it's tedious, but we got to do this. My inventory is just too crazy. If I get rid of anything that I need to have on my character's inventory, let me know and I'll grab it back. I just don't know what I need and what I don't. Adamantine slag, you'd think we would have used this in the forge, but apparently not. So we'll send that to the camp as well. And then we've got a, an assortment of gems and things, which are bloodstone. Is that important? Is that a, a crafting reagent? Or is it just for selling? Broken moon lantern. I'm going to need that to get through the moon gate, so I'm going to keep that. Cage key. Um, that's, the, that's the goblin key, right? All right, send to camp. Heart shaped. That's an alchemical ingredient. Send to camp. I'm not going to be doing any alchemy here. Indigo dye? Okay, I don't need to dye my crap. Jade. All right, so I'll sell those. Memory shard. 
Coiled shadows move within this crystal as if something were trapped within. I mean, it's 0.2 pounds. That's 0.1 pound. I might as well keep that. But then again, I don't need it. Okay, so I'll sell that. Sell, sell. Mysterious artifact. That's bound. I can't get rid of that. Sell. I'll keep that. Uh, Susur tree bark. I need that for crafting, right? I'll send it to camp for now, and then I'll sell that. All right, let's go through all of our jewelry here. I'm gonna need that just in case I need to get into tight, uh, tight spots. The magic ring, it's useless, but it's also unique. I'm gonna go ahead and send that to camp. And then these are all for selling. I'll sell, sell. We've got a bunch of stuff I need to sell. So I need to visit a vendor. Maybe I just need to go back to the druid camp. Oh wait, they're not there anymore, are they? They all left the druid camp, didn't they? So where would I go to sell all this crap? Brass locket. Point five pounds. I guess we'll send that to camp. Curtain Lady 7 says, uh, Afternoon, Ox. Did you ever find your keys? I didn't, but uh, someone in my house did. Thankfully. And so I was able to get into my car. Soul coin. These coins can power infernal engines. I have a feeling that's going to be important later. And then I've got a variety of scrolls and arrows. I should probably keep all of them in my inventory as well. I need to keep this one. No, I want to sell that for later. And then a variety of potions. Okay. So I've mostly lightened my load here. Let's switch to... Carlac. And start sending to camp. All these books. Sort by type. Uh, I need to give that to Ox, Bardyhorn. Well, I guess he doesn't have to. Right, lots of magical items. I want to keep all of these. Book, 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 book. So many bucks. Right. Send to camp. Acid, alchemist's fire, another bloodstone, caustic bulb, gold ingot. I want to sell that. Grease bottle, haste spores, heart, hearth, hearth light bomb. All right, I need to keep the infernal alloy for Carlac, right? So each one weighs one pound. I should probably keep this. I don't know what it does. I, I don't need these. Let's um, send a camp. Withered blue petal. It smells faintly of honey. I don't know what that is for. Uh, fluoride shard. See, is it an alchemical ingredient? It doesn't tell me. So I don't know what it does. So I want to sell those as well. All right, and then everything after this. I want to give that to, uh, what's her name? Pavel says, Berg and Omelum at the Myconid Colony are vendors. Okay, thank you very much, Pavel. So I'm going to put this in the camp for the Githyanki.
Uh, and then I'll give her just a regular helmet. And I probably want to give her a better weapon as well. 5 to 12. 5 to 21. This is what I want her to have. 4 to 11. 6 to 16. Okay, so then for Karlak, or no, for Lizelle, Probably give her the Sword of Justice, I guess. So we'll send that to camp for her. Dark Justicar Helm. So it's saving throws only. All right, so Lizelle's going to need Greaves, uh, boots, pants. Oh, this is undergarments. A necklace and then rings. I don't think she has a necklace. Let's try giving her uncovered mysteries, I guess. And then the rest can be sold. Now, what's that? Tablet fragment. Oh, I never did that. Okay, I need to figure out a place to put all of the tablet frag fragments. And these weigh two pounds. Pavel says Berg and Omelum at the Mykonid Colony are vendors. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Pavel. Tilly says, hi, loves. Hey, Ox. Sick today. Sick day today. Any chance we can get some pajamas with the Ox plushy design on them? Either a t-shirt and a pants or the classic PJs. I mean, that's a lovely idea. Um, some fuzzy pajamas would be fun, wouldn't they? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, I'd have to talk to my vendor to see if we can figure something like that out. Tilly gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community. Thank you so much, Tilly. And congratulations to John Washburn, Sean Swang, Sarah Lowry, Knight Phoenix, and Mr. Bear. Thank you so much, Tilly. Josh Bunton says, where were the keys? They were in my bedroom. And to this day, I don't know where. I f I, they, somebody found them in my room and then placed them up on my dresser. So I don't know where they found them. Canticles, let's add that to camp. And let's go ahead and add the fragments as well, because they're really heavy, and I don't know what to do with them just yet. All right, she's carrying a ton of alchemy supplies, just lots and lots of alchemy ingredients. I don't do alchemy. Like, I, why, why is she carrying all of this? Let's just store that, too. Okay, she's got a, a wide variety of armors. It's armor class 13, 13, 15, 15. One less slashing damage. When the wearer deals radiant damage, they cause radiant shockwave. Uh, let's store this. That might be better than the... Ooh, chainmail 17. Okay, that, we might need that for the Githyanki. So we'll send that to the cap. That's a healing helm. Helmet of smiting. Man, all these helms for Shadowheart. Just tons of stuff that's great for her. All right, we've got devil foil masks. Don't know what that's for. Let's just send a camp. 
Uh, and then all of this can be sold, I think. I don't need any of that anymore. Wait, not proficient with heavy armor? Wait, why did that appear and then disappear? Yeah, I did it again. All right, a Sharon crossbow, that's four to 11. That's two to 10, two to nine. Let's go ahead and put this over there for the Gith Yankee. All right, sell, 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 sell. Zionide? Yeah, I'd probably sell. Sell. And sell all that. And then we'll sell all that. Now this is, uh... Oh, this is better than what I have on. I only swapped it out so that I could uh, speak to the dead. So we'll save that for uh, specific situations. Perfumed letter, we'll send that to the camp. And then more alchemist uh, stuff. Sell. A humanoid brain, this is five pounds. Dark mind. I'm not gonna carry around five pounds of God knows what. I'll send it to camp. But it's probably one of those things where I won't know what it's for until I stumble upon it. Dye, uh, rune powder vial. The rune powder inside explodes when ignited, damaging everything in the vicinity. Permanent. What is that? Is that a weapon? Is it, is it a thrown explosive? Guess I'll sell that as well. One with the weave. All right. Sort by type. Drow poison. Uh, arrows. Arrow of monstrosity. And he doesn't even have a ranged weapon. So, should he have a ranged weapon? Did he have a ranged weapon before he died? Uh, intimidation plus one. Do I really want to give him intimidation plus one? Or constant? No, he can't wear medium armor. He's got the spectator eyes, which gives him ray of fear and wounding ray. I mean, he's got spells. Does he need a crossbow? Let's see if he can even Whatever use comes, a crossbow. I'm ready. Light crossbow. Which way to the nearest library? Yeah, he can use it. All right. So then we'll keep some of these arrows on his inventory for now. Crooked Wand of Fireballs. What is that? You can use an action to cast fireballs from this broken wand. All very nearby creatures must make a dexterity saving throw. Well, that's not better than this, Morning Frost. What do I do with this? Where does it go? It's a melee weapon. Single use. So it's like a scroll. All right, then we've got a bunch of stuff uh, that I just need to sell. <laughs> just tons of stuff I need to sell. Another devil foil mask, send that to camp. It's 3 or 13. Light armor, that's drow studded. But, uh, no, that would be good for a starion, I suppose. Medium. Don't need the shield. Sell, sell, sell. Save that. Sell. Okay. 
Wade Speakerman gifted uh, five Oxhorn memberships to the community. Thank you so much, Wade. And congratulations to Connor Scriv. No, this is Patrick. Alyssa Rub Rebuke. Vault Tech Spy, Matt Belloc. Uh, and Matt Belloc. Thank you so much, Wade. Super Taram says, uh, happy hump day. Any plans to play The Invincible? Maybe I'll have to add it to my list. No plans yet, but that might change. Colonel 87th says, I was actually pointing out to the handcrafted nature of Fallout 4 versus the repetitive randomized um, in Starfield because it doesn't feel like a work of art. Uh, what's, I, I feel like that comment is in response to another conversation. Uh, in general, any kind of, uh, um, randomly generated content will make a game feel less like art because art is handcrafted, not machine generated, right? So anytime something is machine generated, it feels less like art. I think that the developers of Starfield realized that and went out of their way to avoid that um, by having a series of handcrafted locations that were then randomly placed. Um, they were partially successful. By that I mean that each of the planets we explore, for the most part, do feel unique. Um, even though the, the animals are randomly placed, I think, and uh, the landscapes are randomly generated, um, I haven't gone to different planets and thought, oh man, this feels like every other planet. What is frustrating is that since every single handcrafted location is simply dumped into a cell within a spreadsheet of possible locations that can pop up on any number planet, um, we sometimes get location and planet combinations that don't make any sense. And because of that, and we also stumble upon locations that we've been to before with unique handcrafted lore that shouldn't be duplicated in the world. So because of that, it can sometimes come across as being not very artistic, I guess. You, it, if you didn't take the care, the time and, and attention and care to make sure something like that doesn't happen, it feels less like art and more like um, something spewed out by a robot. So there are moments like that when it happens, but even, I do think that they tried to spend time to <clears throat> prevent that from happening. Now this is Patrick says, Minecraft is not art. We're talking about storytelling, right? To my knowledge, there's not a bunch of lore to Minecraft. I, I could be wrong about that as I have never played it. Uh, my kids have played it though and I've watched them play it and it's, it is art because it gives you a wonderful tool set to be creative, right? But we're talking about lore in particular. I believe that Starfield gives you a lot of tools to be creative too, but the tool set is not that impressive. Like I wasn't terribly thrilled with um, colony building. The thing that really makes a Bethesda game stand out are its characters and its stories and its environmental storytelling. Starfield knocks environmental storytelling out of the park. E every single location that we have visited is really well crafted with lots of interesting lore, but they put a ton of details into each of their little locations, even the ones that are randomly stumbled upon. The weaknesses of Starfield is in their character storytelling. I don't think I care about a single character in Starfield. I began to care about Sarah Morgan way after we started getting into requests. Um, some of the other characters I just don't care about at all. None of the random side characters you ever really care about because their character storytelling just wasn't that impressive. Um, and uh, their, their minor location storytelling is all but absent which is a bit frustrating. The really nice thing about Fallout 4 is you would walk into a uh, into a, um, a ruined shack and you would see a skeleton and then find a note and that one note would tell this awful story that was then uh, the, the great ramifications of which dawned upon you as you explored the, the, the shack. Or you would go into the ruins of, a, of an elementary school and you would find a ton of uh, tiny skeletons and uh, bits and pieces of story would tell you what really went on there. We're not getting a whole lot of that in Starfield, um, which is a little bit of a bummer. 
I mean, it's still a good game. I still really enjoy it and I'm still playing it, but I understand where people are coming from, where they feel like it's less, I mean, Colonel 87 sees, says that he feels like it's less of a work of art. It, it clearly is a work of art, but I understand where you're coming from with that perspective. All right, anyway, well, we're dealing with inventory here and we have mostly gone through no everything here. I think I just need to visit a vendor. Let's get rid of some of these alchemy supplies. We don't need uh, camp supplies. We'll send those to camp as well. The keychains. Do we need all these keychains? Why doesn't the rusty jail key work on a keychain? It's just a ton of keys. What do we need all these keychains for? I can sell the pouch. Uh, don't know what the soul coin is for. Let's get rid of the keychains. I guess I don't understand what these are for. Oh, it's a container. All right, well, I don't need that, so. I'd love to, thanks. What's next? You have my attention. Okay, I think we're good. Right, uh, we're at Grim Forge. I think we're finished here in Grim Forge. Is there anything in here that we didn't... Uh, didn't explore. I think we've pretty much explored everything here. Uh, there's uh, our path to Moonrise Towers. Tea house? Oh, that's the boat. Right, of course. Harper's stash, we already found that, and nothing else is marked. So, let's go to, uh, uh, Underdark, Mykonid Colony. Thanks, boss. We'll be looking a lot worse if not for from a friend. Same as us, I expect. Colonel 87th says, art is meticulous detail. It's my birthday. Happy birthday, Colonel 87th. We've had some rest. Maybe we can still go back to the others. No lump of Our work is bigger than any one of us. Oh, I get so turned around. Uh, let's see. There we go. Still breathing, despite everything. Ripple bar to keep sustain going. an entire village if seeded properly. At least they're peaceful. Welcome back. Have you made any new discoveries? I do enjoy a good bargain. If anything in my private collection is to your liking. Okay, he's only got about a thousand gold to barter with, so we might not be able to get very far here, but let's do what we can. Really? There we go. Do I need bloodstone for anything? Let me know now before I sell it. Okay, so Lizelle has two ring slots that we're gonna have to fill.
Talk to the sentient amulet. All right. We needed to, um... We, we needed to carry this with us. We didn't put it on. We avoided the temptation to put it on. But we've got a quest to deliver this or something. There we go. Pavel says, Oh my god, Oxhorn. Start with heavy items. Pavel, I'm selling here. Like, I, it, I, I'm going to get through all of my stuff. I don't want to... He doesn't have any heavy items. Like, we already went through that. He's... I'm going to... All right, hold on. Yeah, that only gave us... 53? I think 53. I don't want to save all of these magic rings because I'm I don't know if I'm ever going to need them. Don't know if I need a soul coin or not. Let's Alright. Now for her, we'll do all this crap. Keep keep these. Grease bottle, just in case. Bloodstone. All right. Uh, <clears throat> I guess if I were using a Sterian, he would want some of this, some of this shadow gear, right? So maybe I should save this for a Sterian and put that on him later. Feather fall. These are leather boots. I don't need the shattered flail. The deep delver. Five to twelve. Great club. I don't think I need that. So I guess I'll save these for Asterion. Okay. Now, she doesn't need the short sword or the bow, vision of the absolute, cyanide, helmet of smiting. I mean, that would have been good for her, but she's now got this awesome attackers can't land critical hits on the wearer helmet. So we'll sell it. Dark Justicar mail. I've got two of that. Two Dark Justicar and males. Oh, don't need that either. Oh, and he's, uh, alright, that's it. Okay. Very well. I have mushrooms to catalog. Right, uh... <laughs> Is right. I don't know half of what they're saying. At least they're peaceful. Well, there's all the gnomes we oh. saved. Somehow you look worse than last I saw you. <laughs> Thanks, boss. We'll be looking a lot worse if not for help from a friend. Aye. Same as us, I expect. Okay, where else can I sell stuff? Is there another merchant around here? Uh, not here. Not at the Arcane Tower. Can I get there through there? Okay, there's the Cellunite out outpost. <clears throat> I've got the tablet thing to solve there, I think.
All right, so that's the grandma. Finish the masterwork weapon, forge a weapon. What is that? There's the goblin camp, but I made an enemy of the goblins. It's at the Blighted Village? Okay, the mountain pass. This is going to take me to the Githyanki Kresh. But I gotta go through the mountain pass. The Emerald Emerald Grove is uh is empty now, isn't it? Are there any merchants left inside? I, I need to go find out. Enjoy it while it lasts. There's a merchant down here, wasn't there? I, I let I let Saza expire. Whoops. <laughs> I, I wonder if I could reanimate her corpse and uh, to get her out of there. Probably, huh? Kim Osabi says the druid seller is there. That's who I'm trying to find. Hey, there's a backpack just lying over here. And it's empty. Went wrong way for the merchant. Stayed away. Come now. He took in those trays and then he just left. Is it in here? Stone door? I don't recall a merchant being in here. Well, there's no one left in here, so we can read all of the. They left all this stuff behind? Why did they leave all this stuff behind? You went past it. It's near the entrance, says the chat. I don't know. He's right by where you come in the gate, says John Thomas. Oh. Well, there's Kaga, and it's not her. Where is this druid seller? That's too far, says Chet. Oh my god. Hey, 
again? It'll take a while for us all to recover, but you've helped us take the first step. Yeah, it's him, okay. Of course. Oh, that's better, 2300. That's good. What's the story? Let's get on with it. Gotta lighten my load. to 13. Lizel needs a sword, right? All right, I don't know what to do with about the rune powder vial, so let's Elminster's not around, so it might as well. Okay, gloves of uninhibited Kushigo. The wearer deals. All right, that might be good for a Starion. Uh, the speedy light feet. That would be good for Lizel. Brow studded leather armor, that would be good for a Starion. Uh, don't need that. Don't need that. A chain shirt, medium armor. Don't need that. Does everybody else have a helmet? I think they do. And he's got all my, my magical items. <laughs> because, uh... He's got that hunger. Warfang, uh, Astarion would need a dagger, right? I don't need this staff. He's got an awesome staff, so I can sell that. Sword of Screams. That's a rapier, that's for Bardyhorn, but he doesn't need that. He's got a better weapon now, too. Three to eight. Moon Maiden. Staff. Speedy Reply, another rapier. Asterion would be good with that as well, wouldn't he? Two to five. Two to seven. One to ten. That's a pike. Right, he needs to keep one magic item on his inventory just in case. So I've got three potential weapons for Astorian. I don't know what to do with this crooked wand. I'll save it just in case for a rainy day. And let's see. All right, we're getting all the money here. Oh, we can buy camp supplies. Cool. Should I spend money buying camp supplies from this guy? He's still got 600 uh, revenue left. So let's go to camp. May you keep balance. Let's go to camp and make sure that our other companions have enough uh, good inventory. So let's send to camp. I need to keep that for a quest. The sentient amulet, and I can't put it on. I 
Gotta keep that. Gotta keep that. Gotta keep that. And I just got that. I'll keep that. All right, he's looking good. It's a shot. Uh, don't know if I want that for uh, Asterion or not. Can't afford to stay idle. Let's speak with the dead. I'm gonna keep that on her because I might need that in the future. Quite ready for you. And then he's got a lot of good stuff. Hold on. Wits and blades always. She's shot. got a helmet. Soldier. She's got a good helmet. It's a cap of wrath, though. Now that's good for her. She needs a cap of wrath. No one stopped me yet. And then he's got the cap of curing, which is a good, uh, a good bard. Very good looking. I wonder what the next helmet. Is. Uh, let's. Uh, I believe. Okay, let's add all of the helmets to the camp, just in case. And then all this armor, and then we'll sell everything we don't use on the other characters. Okay, to the camp. At least things have stayed interesting. One day I'll catch a break. Well, hello. What can I do for you? Let's drag him into our party for now. <laughs> Sorry, but I prefer groups that are a little smaller. More. Lose a follower or two. All right, all right, all right. Let's get rid of Karlak for a second. Oh, hi. Let's leave her behind. Really? Really, really? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Karlak. Oh, fine. I'll be here eating dirt or whatever. Don't worry, I'll be back for you. You're my barbarian, I need you. Well, hello. What can I do for you? Darling, I thought you'd never ask. Lead on. All right, I got to level him up because we all hit, we all did a group level up. Okay. Class features uncanny dodge. Use your lightning quick reflexes to protect yourself. When an attack hits you, you only take half the usual damage. Skills. Let's change these. All right, we've got deception, persuasion. Why do we have persuasion? Charisma? I've already got my bard for that. Yeah, he's a, he's a rogue, so he's he's going to have a lot of acrobatics, right? Performance. He's already got a plus seven to that, though. Sleight of hand. Perception. He's going to need perception. Okay, I guess we'll do that.
Okay, he's fully leveled up. Let's make sure he's wearing the appropriate Don't gear. Linger. Okay, where's the chest here? There it is. No, that's not it. Just the freaking chest. There's the mirror. There it is. Don't mind if I do. Oh, he's got a priestess's key. Don't know what that's for. We'll send that to camp. He's got camp supplies. What is he doing with all this stuff? Scroll of Revify. Definitely gonna need that. All right. Let's get this guy kitted out. Oh, there's a feat, right? Okay, the wearer deals an additional 1d4 damage with throw attacks and attacks made with improvised weapons. He's currently wearing padded armor. That's an 11. Oh, this is so much better. Let's give him the drow. Leather armor. Yeah, it looks good on him. Stealth plus one. All uh, right, this is his... I'll save that. He needs a helmet, but he's not proficient in medium armors. Is he? No, so he can't wear that. Those are Lizelle's clothes. Does he have pants? You don't need pants. He's got underwear. So he needs a helmet, necklace, and a variety of rings and crap. Okay, let's see. Arcana, religion. Uh, this gives him thunder, a thunder spell. Saving throws against charmed. Lightning blast. Resistance to slashing damage, vulnerability to bludgeoning damage. Uh, evocation cantrap, don't know what that does. The wearer can't be electrocuted. I mean, it's better than nothing. Feather fall or focused stride. When you cast a spell that requires concentration, you gain momentum. I mean, that's not useful for him. But it gives him athletics plus one. But wait, that's a medium armor. And he's not proficient in it. Okay. Well, that's definitely better for him. All right, well, we don't need this. We can sell, sell. He needs a better weapon. He can't use scimitars. He can't use rape, uh, uh, rapiers either. Martial weapons or scimitars. So I guess daggers. That's all he can use is daggers? Well, all right. Can he dual wield daggers? He can. Nice. So I need to find another rare dagger for Astarian here. He can use clubs. Oh. Light crossbow, short bow. Four to nine, four to 11. Okay. Didn't I put another crossbow in here somewhere? Yeah. Fire Stoker. Well, 
Well, we might need that for Lizelle. Okay, let's just double check here. There's another dagger. This is four to seven. That's one to four. So this is a better dagger. Wait, no, now that's one to four. All right, I'm confused. Well, we don't need that. That's zero to three. We don't want that. We've got one crossbow there that I think we're going to keep, and he can't wear that helmet. So he needs a helmet. Let's see if there's any more jewelry we can give him. I guess that... And then I guess we'll give him the magic ring. <laughs> Might come in handy later. Okay. Pavel Kolarski says, The Kresh vendor has an ideal short sword for Asterion. Awesome. Let me know when I get there and I'll do that. What's this doing here? What's a peculiar clothing chest? Do I need that? Something. Stay here. Oh, darling, I'm hurt. I thought we had something special. I guess I'll spend my evenings lounging here while you do all the hard work. It sounds awful. Okay, like that. Like that. These boots have seen everything. Speak. Liza, why are you naked? Oh, that's right. I took off all of her good armor to give it to Karlak. It is done. Now it's time to level her up, too. She's a warrior, right? Fighter. Nice. New feet available. All right, so I gave her lucky. Weapon master, you gain proficiency with four weapons of your choice and your strength or dexterity increases by one to a maximum of 20. Tavern brawler, <laughs> what is that? Unarmed attack, okay. Maximum hit points point increase by two for every level. That would be useful. Cat5 says you can't uh, get a dagger for him right now with the saucer wood and three... You can get a dagger for him right now with the susar wood in the Blighted Village. Oh, thank you, Cat5. Maybe I'll do that. Dual wielder. You can use two-handed, two-weapon fighting even if your weapons aren't light. And you gain a plus one bonus to each to armor class while wielding a melee weapon in each hand. 
You cannot dual wield heavy weapons. Oh. Crossbow expert. That might be useful. Uh. Athlete, your strength or dexterity increases by one to a maximum of 20. When you're prone, standing up uses significantly less movement. Your jump distance also increases by 50%. That would be useful. You can increase an ability by two or two abilities by one. Heavy Armor Master. Your strength increases by one to a maximum of 20. Incoming damage from non-magical attacks also decreases by three while you're wearing heavy armor. Can she, if I get this, will she be able to wear heavy armor? She can only wear medium armor, right? Oh wait, no, she can wear heavy armor. No, she has a proficiency with light and medium armor. She needs heavy armor, I think. Yeah, I think this is what I want for her. Okay, Chad is telling me she already has heavy armor proficiency. Really? Alright, well then I guess I don't need that. Oh yeah, I can get medium armor master as well. Hey, proficiency in that ability is saving throws. Increase in ability by one. Okay, um, I think I want durable. Well, I really want to improve my dexterity as well. Don't give her dexterity, says chat. Okay. Well, then I won't worry about that. Let's work on her constitution, then. See, I don't think I have any heavy armor for her, anyway. Assume nothing. Repositioning. Let's have a look. Our inventory is completely empty. All right, uh, by type, let's start with armor. She needs a helmet. 
Now, she has the Githyanki plate, which, which is what she came with, and that's a 15 armor class. Uh, it's a heavy armor. She can wear it? Yeah, she can wear it. Okay. So I didn't need to spec into heavy armor. She can already wear heavy armor. This is an uncommon heavy armor chainmail plus 117 armor class. That's great. Which means I can sell the rest. Let's give her the rings. Um... Let's just give her shelter. Oh, she's got rings on. Oh, but those can be sold. And then Absolute Tempest. And then Boots. Uh, speedy Light Feet. Athletics plus one. Yes. That's what she needs. Necklaces. Saloon's Dream or Lightning Blast. Let's give her Lightning Blast. Do we have any hands? I don't think I have any hands for her. All right, well, I can give her this crossbow. That's three to 11 damage. It's gonna be an improvement from that, which is two to nine. She currently has no weapon. Dear Lord, what, have, what am I thinking? Sword of Justice. This is probably the best for her at the moment. Boots of Striding. Both give Athletics plus one. Speedy Sparks. What are Lightning Charges? Well, that's for casting a spell, so she, she doesn't need that. Okay, I think I can sell the rest. Pavel says, click on an empty inventory slot. It shows equipable. Oh. Cape of the Red Prince equipped by Barty Horn. Oh, that's cool. Thank you. I like it. That's uh that's gonna come in handy. Alright, I think she's good. Well, uh if I'm gonna be going to the crash, then I'll keep her with me for a bit. Still alive, so that's progress. All right, let's see what's left in this trunk. The gods are watching me. Voices of the Circle, what does that do? I don't know what that does. I think Detect Thoughts may be better for him. And Susser Tree Bark. I'm gonna need that, right? Voice of the Circle gives bonuses to conversation checks. Oh. Well, I want that. Okay, I think we're done. A 
It'll take a while for us all to recover, but you've helped us take the first step. Of course. The big question is, is it better for Bardyhorn to be using a two-handed Falar Aluve or to use two rapiers, each of which does 4 to 11 damage? Speedy reply. running out. How much does he have left? He, oh, he's got enough. He's got enough. Okay. I guess we'll just sell these. Wait, do I have enough magic items on Gales? At the ready. No, I need, I need to give him a magic item just in case. Okay, I'll keep uh, this one magic item, uh, the rapier, speedy reply. Let's give that to Gale. Or we'll do that later, I guess. Uh, detect thoughts and sentient amulet. Yeah, I'm, I'm not putting that on. All right. May you keep balance. Voice of the Circle, grant an ally a plus two bonus to persuasion checks. Okay, that's what that's for. Now, uh, let's give him the rapier, just in case. And, oh, she needs to sell all this stuff. Go ahead. No. I'm listening. I hate that mask he's wearing. It'll take a while for us all to recover. But you've helped us take the... F of course. May you keep balance. Okay. I think we're good to go. <laughs> Finally. Let's do a hard save. Now, before we go to the Githyanki crash, I've got the Susar Bark, and I need to go to the uh, Masterwork Weapon. So let's go to the Blighted Village. I've been watching the fight, Shadowheart. Your skills are improving. My skills were just fine to begin with. You can save the compliments. I don't pay compliments. I make observations. Okay, that's right. I remember this. A pleasurable deal, the shocking truth. Below is a transcript of an interview with the writer and director of A Pleasurable Deal, Mr. Kingsley Harp. What was the inspiration behind this, if I may be so bold, entirely lewd piece of drama? It's about exploring the taboo, seeing who we are as people really are. Yes, Robert makes a deal with the Cambion, but who wouldn't? Well, I like to think most people wouldn't. Then you don't know most people. 
Everyone wants something. Everyone needs something. Cambians can see it. In a way, they know us better than we know ourselves. But at the end of the play, Robert dies horribly. What does that say about what we, as you put it, need? You forget. Robert dies because he broke away from Carlisle. He didn't stay true to the deal they made. So you're encouraging people to make a pact with Hell's offspring? To give up as Robert did his soul? We have only one life. Why not make the most of it? So that was your deal? I beg your pardon? In fact, this was your directional debut, wasn't it? You couldn't even get published in the tabloid Baldur's Bash before this play came out. Did you honestly trade your soul for an erotic play? I... All right, we're done here. <laughs> wow, someone traded his soul with the devil to publish an erotic play? Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> hey, a trap disarm toolkit. All right. The Approachable East. I'm surprised I left all of these books behind when I came here last. I must say, for a place with so many orcs and goblins, Thesk is a remarkably pleasant land. A true melting pot where all are accepted, and quite a lot seems to be permitted. Alas, the crew I sailed here with were imprisoned by the harbor master, but I was soon on the road known as the Golden Way, and it lives up to its name. The wealth of a continent marches along this road. Furs from Neverwinter and iron from Nashkel flow in one direction, while silks and jewels flow the other. I have heard so many stories of the world. The Golden Way passes through Rashomon, through the wastes of the Horde Lands, and on to the continent of Karatur, a land of empires, dragons, and beasts I've never dreamt of. I am so close to Rashomon, but what was once my dream now sounds so mundane. Last night I made camp and was joined by a charming fellow. I told him my dream of seeing Rashomon, and he laughed. He claims that Rashomon is nothing compared to Thay, and invited me to visit the court of the Zulkers. It seemed rude to turn down such an illustrious invitation, so I will see what this Thay has to offer. Then Rashomon and beyond. This charming gentleman wouldn't be a vampire, would he? I hope not. All right. This forge. Okay. Melting furnace. What do I need? Melting furnace. Uh... Suzar Bark. Dagger or sickle? Oh, I gotta put a weapon in there. Now for a great sword, dagger, or sickle. And I just sold everything. Cat5 says grab the wood and a dagger and use the forge here. Okay. So the melting furnace is working. I need a dagger. Uh. Any old dagger will do. Well, I just sold a dagger. Asterion has a regular dagger. Yeah, that's right. All right. All right, I got to leave someone behind real quick. Uh, where's freaking Lizelle? Shadow hard. Speak. 
Chuck. You believe you can survive without me? As you say, do... Carry in! Where are you, Carry in! Carry in! Oh my god, what's the Carry in? Am I blind? Scratch, Will, Carlac, Paulson, Shadowheart. Where's Asterion? Go in the door there, says Chad. Shabby door? Oh, all right. There he is. Yes? He sounds so sad. Darling, I thought you'd never ask. Lead on. Just hit the bottom button to the left, says chat. Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh my god. Well, I wish I would have known that an hour ago. That would have been useful. <laughs> okay, um... Now, does he have a dagger? I think he does. Yes! Just a regular old dagger. That's great. Let's leave camp. an offering. A candy sweet scent wafts forth. The Sousa bark infuses the weapon from within the flames. The flames sputter away. The dagger is yours for the taking. Mine for the taking, or did I already take it? There it is. Suser Dagger. Five to eight damage. Okay, marginally better. Weapon enchantment. Okay. Well, if we ever use Asterion in combat, he'll be good to go. But he pulled a knife to my neck the first time I met him, and I don't forgive easily, so I'm ignoring him. <laughs> Let's go back to camp. All right, we've got Lizelle. Uh, no, we need to get Lizelle. Let's go. Let's go get Lizelle. I have a lot on my mind. Um, well, in it. Yes. Uh, darling, I'm hurt. I thought I. Guess I'll spend my evenings lounging here. It sounds awful. Okay, now where's Swift as my feet can carry me. Down here, right? Speak. It is done. Okay, we're good to go. Alright, we did the masterwork weapon. Oh, do I gotta leave? Alright, I gotta leave. Right. Hmm. Whispering depths? Oh, I remember this. 
Yeah, I backed out. I was like, nope. Nope, I'm not exploring this. Do I explore it now? There were a bunch of really awful spiders in here. Oh, this just leads to another passage to get to the Grim Forge. Lore Evolution says there's a quest item down here. Oh, dear God, really? All right, I'm quick saving. I'm gonna have to. These are the guys I killed earlier, last time. Well, at least they don't respawn. Daniel says, armor up, Ox, and if you find a big hole, try jumping into it. That way, this goes there. Go over here and go down over here. Is that the big hole? That's a big chasm. You want me to jump into that? Not that one, says Daniel. Oh, okay. Well, just, if I, if I get to the right hole, let me know. Oh, big baddie. Phase Spider Matriarch. Predator of the ethereal plane. 125 hit points. Oh, dear Lord. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this. your taste. One second. It was my brother. He wanted to know what to get my son for Christmas. All right, uh, let me just blast this guy with... 
Resistances to poison, poison immunity. John says, Ox, kill the eggs first if you can. Face spider eggs? Those eggs? Are there more eggs? Last 10 turns. Pushing the spider into the hole will kill it. Oh! Yeah, that would take some serious athletics though. Too heavy to shove. But I, had, I do have Thunder Wave. The target is blocked. That would push both of them in there. Saved. Should have done a pommel strike. Crap. He's got Thunder Wave. What does it mean target is blocked?
on my way. Can't afford to let up. That's why I had the lightning charge. It builds up lightning charges. All right. didn't work. God. Why? No! Spells to produce wisdom or saving throws are nice, says Brad Ludwig. weapon in a large arc. Okay, got one. Let's back him up. Back no her up. Time now. To waste. Oh, 
Oh dear God. Disadvantage? Why? Can I destroy the spider web? I can. So if any of these spiders get on a spider web, I could burn it. Not enough movement. Why does it say path is interrupted for this? How, how is that interrupted? That did a lot of damage. Interesting. Okay, well, I think I need to lure them onto the spider webs. If I could lure her onto that, that would be great. Be concentrating on another spell to cast this. Target is too far. Daniel says, maybe destroy the web bridge with fire. Well, I want I, I want to wait until the big spider gets on top of the web bridge. That's, that's what I want to do. Like, I could destroy them now. Maybe that would prevent the little spiders from getting to me since they can't jump. Okay, we can hope, we can hope that works. And then, if that big spider gets there, I can drop it down. Can't reach them.
Okay, maybe now that I can get closer. Nice critical hit. They haven't moved. Good move. Ah, ah I just walked into poison. Oh, no! <laughs> Okay, make up your mind. What are you gonna do? Don't walk in the poison. Don't walk in the poison. Target is too far. <laughs> I didn't see that one either. Oh man. <laughs> this is getting me. It's a lot of spiders. I just want the big guy to come back so we can fight. Here we go. The lesson is death. Mm. Whoops. Whoops. Yeah, that got all those little spiderlings. Lizella's inspired by that. Uh, can I get back up here? <laughs> Get out of there! Come on there, Gale! Yay! Okay, back up, back up, back up! Don't get poisoned! Don't get poisoned! Okay. How many more of these little spider eggs do they got? Well, that area of effect thing worked really well. I don't have any other area effect spells, do I? Sick! 
75% and I missed. Into the pit. <laughs> I mean, that'll work until he zaps up here. I could use it on those, but that seems like a waste of the spell. He does have Thunder Wave, but again, that seems like a waste of the spell for just two of these guys. Oh! That got me poisoned. Crap. Critical miss. I want to wait. Let me just get rid of this guy. Thirty percent disadvantage, and yet I have the high ground. Catastrophe. Immune to simple toxin? That was a toxic arrow. Path is interrupted. Five projectiles. Well, they all hit, but didn't do a lot of damage. I almost have it at half life, though. See if this mage hand can get rid of this last spider. <laughs> Into the deep. All right. Let's finish this. Well, the big mummy spider is kind of just not <coughs> not invested in this fight. She's just staying down there. I don't want to stand on here because that's treacherous. Uh, I guess I'll try to get closer without stepping in the poison. Don't know how I'm going to do that. Well, we'll just walk our way over there. All right, I can't reach him from here, can I? No, not enough movement. I mean, she's stayed there for a couple of turns now. That either means she's going to stay there for a while or she's going to move any minute. Can I get over there without stepping in the poison? Maybe if I jump? No, that's going to put me right in the poison. 
Oh, I can just get over it. Yes. Okay. I need to wait until it moves again for Cloud of Daggers because I think it's going to move the next turn it gets. So maybe I'll just wait. Well, well, well. Forty one damage. Ho oh, ho Yeah, it's only got twenty nine damage left. Ah, I'm really poisoned, but man. If I do that, I'm gonna stand right in the poison, which I don't wanna do. Okay, let me just back her up. Actually, that that's only healing self. Okay. Yeah, I'd have to walk through a bunch of poison to get there, which I don't wanna do, so I'm gonna back her up. Swords meet sorcery. Got to focus. I hope that wasn't a waste. One can't always be a gentleman. All right, Gale. I could do shatter. 55%. Uh. percent. 42%. 30%. Thirty percent. Hundred percent. It didn't do a lot last time, though. I got 100% on the arrow. Oh, but not if I target her. 36%. Forty-two, I'll take it. Mine is the advantage. Critical miss. I gotta get out of this. I gotta get away from the ledge and I gotta get out of this poison. Can't give up. Not now. I gotta lure her to me. I gotta lure her away from that edge where all the poison is. I mean, I could get her with that. 
45%, but I'm gonna walk right through the poison to do it. And it's still only 45%. I'm gonna back up. The poison is faded over here. That worked well. Get him out of the poison. Hey, did that kill it? The cloud of daggers killed it, yay. Oh. Well, it took everything I had, but I, I, I killed the spider. I even got to destroy the uh, the spider bridge once to see how that damaged it. Okay, when does this poison fade? I want this poison to fade away so I can actually walk around and loot without taking damage. Exhausted. Better find somewhere to camp soon. that dark amethyst all right whoops let's move them one at a time the air is ripe with magic right away i'm ready on i go Well, it ends. Not as bad as it could have. Can't slow down. Indolence breeds madness. Without delay. All right, what now? With haste. Poisoner's robe. <clears throat> Uncommon clothing. 10 armor class, pro poison trails. When the wearer casts a spell that deals poison, it deals an additional one to four poison damage. And a silk gland, an alchemical ingredient. <laughs> 10 armor class <clears throat> grants resistance to cold damage. Well, I mean, if I ever do any poison damage with Gale, this will be useful. All right. I feel a breeze. What's down there? Mind you, Footy. The bones of the careless are probably littered down there. Is that the hole you wanted me to jump down? Okay, I got the Dark Amethyst. You can't shake the feeling that darkness seeps out of this heavy, orb-like stone. That's the one, says Daniel. Oh man, you want me to jump down there? I don't want to jump down there. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, let's uh... Save first, says chat. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick save. See, what would be the best way to get down there? I, I guess... Get everyone on the spider web? And then destroy the web? Aim for the bush. Ah! 
This is gonna make me drop prone. Feather fall. Underdark. Kithrak takes great interest in this relic of yours, Shadowland. Or should I say, weapon? What are you hiding? Nothing. I assume your kin are just as misguided as you are. This puts us into the Underdark. I guess, of course it does. Well, we don't need to be here. Did we explore over here? We didn't. Oh, because that's what the big monster thing is, isn't it? of bones <clears throat> these are other people that have fallen down Spores. How did we accidentally? Oh, there he is. If we go down there through that, that's the only part we haven't explored. But then we're going to have to fight that creature, won't we? <clears throat> we haven't gone down here. That's the only path we haven't explored. Dead Vegar. Mykonid. These creatures did battle with Dwergar. They really hate each other. Should a dagger suddenly slice your neck, we may never know who's to blame. This just leads to the decrepit village. Got a short sword of the first blood. It actually does more damage than my Phalar Aluve. Uh, Break the Unbroken deals additional 1 to 8 piercing damage to targets that still have all of their hit points. Uh, but then I would lose Performance plus 1 and Phalar Aluve. Shovel. Okay. Well, that's that dark place explored. All right, we need to do the get the Yankee crash. So let's get out of here. Back to uh, roadside cliffs. 
Now the Risen Road. Okay, let's uh, do a long rest. That was a tough fight. Actually, we've got a short rest available. Let's do that. Lore Revolution says happy holidays. There's a cellar below the potion shop in the Blighted Village. It has a quest item for the amethyst you got. Oh. Okay. Oh, a little respite. As wonder. Blighted Village then, huh? Cellar below the potion shop. Uh, the blighted villa. Where's the potion shop? Moss covered chest. Did we loot this? Prize of 15. We'll add guidance. Hey! We got a helmet, a haste helm. Smooth start. At the start of combat, the wearer gains momentum for three turns. Nice. How did we miss that before? Fresh fish. Fresh fish. Cellar beneath the potion shop. How do I how do I tell what the potion shop is? Ooh, there's a well here. Apart from an overgrowth of moss, the well looks unremarkable. We can investigate to peer into the well. Dry stones line the wall. At the bottom, something gleams in the dappled light. Let's climb down the bucket rope. Oh, the whispering depths. What have we found? Skeleton. No. Is this is this does this lead to the same cave? Is this the same cave system? It is. There's a backpack over there. Man, I think we might have looted all of this. A dead goblin child? What? Oh, that's awful. Okay, can we climb back up? Yeah, we can.
Okay, Chad says the potion shop is right next to this. The shabby wooden doors aren't... Isn't that what we went through earlier? Okay, this is the potion shop. Ooh, antidote. <laughs> so a cellar door. Behind the counter. Oh. Ah. Thank you, Judd. All right, you guys are helping me get all the secrets today. Potion of healing. Oh, wow. Uh, weave moss. Unlocked vitriol of weave moss. Suspicious poison? Let's read the healer's log. Patient Samson, occupation blacksmith, malady gout. Comments, Samson's become accustomed to the good life since he acquired that new apprentice. I gave him a tincture of aut autumn crocus and told him to avoid red meat and ale. Patient Brandley, occupation cooper, malady large wood splinter in hand. <laughs> Comments, splinter removed, wound cleaned, doused in basalm ointment and bandaged. Patient, Timic, occupation none, child. Malady, swallowed a bottle cork. <laughs> Comments, no hardness or blockage in stomach. The cork should pass without causing harm. I gave the lad a stern warning. Patient, Dida, occupation apprentice blacksmith. Malady, minor burns to the face and hands. <clears throat> Comments, another burn for Samson's eager young apprentice. The usual treatment was applied, but I urged her to slow her pace at work before she inflicts real harm on herself. Suspicious poison. Mm, what's that? Oh, lover. Thank you, Gail. Potion of healing recipe. Oh, ho, ho, ho. what have we found? Don't tell me this is another path into the spider den. A poo scraper. What? A we got a poo scraper? Alchemist's fire and a poo scraper. Def, uh, proficiency, <laughs> what? it's a dagger called the Poo Scraper. <laughs> it does three to six damage. I'm surprised it doesn't do poison damage. Uh, <laughs> is that a one of a kind dagger? The Poo Scraper. All right, we got Alchemist Fire, Nut Butter. Oh, that's a Nut Buster. Well, that sounds awful. A Moldering Casket. Oh no. Moldering casket. There are buried people down here. 
do we open the casket and disturb the dead? A, a is for Azuth and other gods. What does that mean? Hmm. What's that? <clears throat> Azuth, the god of wizards, all who spend their whole lives learning. He grants their spe spells, both big and small, for Mistra, always yearning. Bane the tyrant, the black hand, makes sure the strong do rule. He spreads his darkness through the land, praised by the harsh and cruel. Beshaba will bring forth your doom unless you chant her prayer. Spilt from Timora in the womb. I'm sorry, split from Timora in the womb. She brings bad luck to spare. All right, does Oxhorn have, or I'm sorry, Bardyhorn, does he have a shovel? No, who has the shovel? What am I to do? Yes? Someone's got a shovel. Assume nothing. Well, I don't want to collect more shovels. Let's just get that shovel. Hey. Let's get going. Okay, false life. Some money. All right, before I open these caskets and summon the dead, let's quick save here. All right, moldering casket. Ah, surprised! That was an agile guardian. Let's uh, open the next one. Oh, dark journal. Six Nightall, 1371. I pay no service to the gods, but by some blessing, this village believes me and my apprentice to be simple healers. My tattoos are hidden, my red robes locked away, my lab secured. I have not heard the word they since we arrived, and only my apprentice knows me as Ilan Toth. This place is not ideal for my research, but I can never return home, not the way I escaped. I'd be put to death, with worse to follow. The work here is simple, and allows me to continue my research at night, but progress is slow. Reanimation seems easy, but restoring life? That prize eludes me. The tome contains the magic I need, but it fights me at every step, as does my apprentice. At least my familiar has made it easy to secure bodies without raising suspicion. This'll take time. Will the Zulkers find me before I can bring her back? I cannot say. But if they do come for me, I'll have to face the guardians I've raised. Or they'll have to face the guardians I've raised. All right, so we've got a necromancer here. Journal updated, search the cellar. We've got a necromancer here experimenting on raising dead bodies, presumably without the knowledge of the people of the town. Light on my feet. There's another one. All right, nothing in that one. Here's one. Money in that one. There's another one. Scroll of Summon Quasit. Summon a Quasit from the lower planes. The scroll is destroyed upon use. Summon a familiar with the form of a Quasit that can turn invisible and scare enemies. Permanent. Friend. I picked up one friend. Eyebrows, horns, and a rosy cheeks have been drawn upon this skull in a number of bodily fluids. Ew! Ew! Why the bodily fluids part? Really, you couldn't say drawn with chalk or drawn with coal? But no, the eyebrows and the horns were drawn with bodily fluids? Ew. Odd X says, have Gale learn that spell. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Gale, uh, what, what, it's 
It's L? Yeah, all right, so learn more spells. Find familiar cheeky closet. Not trained yet, yeah. So in that. I've got a lot of here. Glyph of warding. Shocking grasp. Not trained yet, yeah, I'll do that one. Darkness, sure. Bestow curse. I mean I could do all of these, right? Web. Thick flammable webbing. Should I just do all of these? Stinking Cloud, Sleet Storm, Rave Enfeeblement, Remove Curse, Glyph of Warding, Detect Thoughts, Dark Vision, Insufficient Level, Bone Chill, Blindness, Bestow Curse, Tasha's Hideous Laughter, might as well. That's a lot of spells. 15 new spells gained. All right, well, uh, familiar, cool. Right, I did this one. Is that blood? I did, I didn't no, do this never mind. one. And of course, they're all empty except for the first one I opened. Need to find a way forward. Ooh, mirror, mirror on the wall. We read the book. We could pass a half orc check to say I'm a uh, crunk. We could pass a bard check to say I know how this goes. Magic mirror, tell me true. Or we could try to repeat the name that we read from the book, Ilun Toth. My master is a filthy half breed. You are not Ilun Toth. If you are his ally, step forward and declare it. Oh, uh, we could pass an intimidation check to say open or I'll smash you to pieces. Bad luck be damned. Uh, let's try that. Got to pass a 15. Oh, failure. Roll again. Yay! There is a pause as those glass eyes take you in. Then... Guarded laboratory. What were they hiding down here? A little bit of intimidation works wonders. Okay, basilisk oil, scroll of feather fall, and we got some books the Moonhaven Logbook. The book is filled with pages and pages of observations, tracking travelers and people in the village. You turn to the final pages. Uh, the 26th of Ilias, Oliver Singe, merchant, arrives in Moonhaven, departs next day. Kalashite? Seven Iliant, stranger, name unknown, passes through, not Thane, Rashemi. Fourteen Marpanoth. Three men in black armor pass through, not Thane. Two of Uktar, Hackett, journeyman, passes through, not Thane. 
30th of Uktar. Raid! Black Armored Soldiers. Some damage, not Thane, but dangerous. 14 Night Hall. The book's key gem has gone missing. Familiar ordered to watch my apprentice. Key gem? Like the one we found below? Uh, 14 of Night Hall. Singe passed through. Doesn't stop. 15 of Night Hall. Familiar reports. Apprentice disappeared near well. We'll observe... Oh, was that the child's body we found in the bottom of the well? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, 18th of Nightall, raid some soldiers, same soldiers as before. Townsfolk taken. 20 of Nightall, smoke on the horizon, raid. Vonrek says, if you had not killed that first skeleton so fast, it would have run from the casket to casket, drawing out more undead. Oh. Well, I'm lucky then. And then we've got the Collectiana Rubrum. Rubrum. We turn page after page, filled with strange alchemical sketches and formulae. Some are written plainly, some in runes and scripts we barely recognize. There are guides to transmuting metals and recipes for weapons of war, but more than anything else, the book is concerned with reanimating dead flesh. Wait, 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 wait. why are you going over there? The evil eye. What was that? Necromancy of Bay? Research notes. Raised dead. Failed. Gone too long. Body decomposed. Reanimation failed. Came back as a ghoul. Had to kill it again. Speak with the dead. Failed. Answers unhelpful. Clone, failed, needs living tissue. Reanimation, plus clone, failed. Had to kill both ghouls. Resurrection, failed. Why? Magical curse? True resurrection. I have reached the limit of my skills and resources. The book offers help. Dare I accept? Fringe Philosophy, Volume 5. We're just getting all the books today. The publisher's note claims this volume promotes magical theory too radical for the mainstream. This excerpt is attributed to High Artificer Thara Bryn of Baldur's Gate. I suppose they seek to silence me, believing that an artificer of the High House would not stoop to publish in any volume outside of the great Gondian journals they so diligently guard. But they forget that I am not so grand. Before I lent my name and my knowledge to the High House of Wonders and all the marvels therein, I was not but a lazy farm girl who liked to look up. And that was how I first saw them, the slow and serene earth motes, entire mountains migrating through the sky above. It was later I learned of their origins, of the ancient Netherese Empire that fashioned them, of the residual magic so potent it sustained them all. The wizards of Nethero carved marvels out of the mundane, lifted the earth aloft for industry, for sport. It was later still, after I earned my place at the High House, that I learned of the long shadow Nethero cast along the evolution of our craft. That their great flying cities fell in folly and flames does not diminish the wonders they wrought, and this stubborn aversion to studying them, to learning what they learned, is the very antithesis of Gon's teaching. Yes, many of the catastrophes inflicted upon the centuries were fruit born of meddling with Netherese seed. Yes, their last shining bastion fell into shadow, their lore twisted to Shar's dark and destructive designs. And yes, I say again, whether the High House will sanction it or no, to study the very flame of creation is worth it, even should the fires consume us. Dabbling in scary magics. Wooden chest. Ooh, Scroll of Feign Death, Mage Armor, Dark Vision, Bone Chill, Speak with Dead, and Vampiric Touch. Nice. The Evil Eye. It's another book.
While the number of trinkets and bargains a hag personally acquires means that her powers will be unique compared to that of her sisters, hags as a whole can still be divided into three subcategories. Night hags, named as such for their ability to haunt a mortal's dreams, slowly devouring vital essence until the victim's soul can be trapped into the hag's soul bag. They are known for being petty, selfish braggarts. Sea hags, Known for devouring their victims whole, sea hags can terrorize and kill with a single look. They reek of fish and are incapable of making proper cup of tea. <laughs> what a weakness. You can do it. also you can kill a man with a look, but you can't make a cup of tea. <laughs> Green hags, they are beautiful. They are powerful. Speak not a word against them. On Death and Resurrection. Lore dump. My goodness. An excerpt from the ongoing meta text, rebound by Yosef Elgin, a scholar excommunicated from the Church of Denifer, Denier, for her heretical efforts to reconstruct the meta text, her God's annal of lost and hidden knowledge. Of what value is a life? Far too esoteric a topic to warrant any serious critical consideration between these pages, surely, or so it would seem at first glance. But once we push aside the mysticism and dewy-eyed sentiment so often clouding our assessment, it is clear that across all the spinning planes, each and every life does indeed have a quantifiable value. It is simply that not all are equally valuable. Consider, we already know that the destruction of our material form is not the end. If anything, our souls are more free after death, transcending planar barriers and a, uh, in search of a resting place that best befits our deeds, beliefs, and station in life. But even this assessment is subject to market forces. Lord Kellamore, weighing our souls against how thoroughly we have given them over to other gods, empowering them in return. There is, of course, an alternate route, not the end of the path, but the chance to retread it. Clerics across the realms wield the power to return life to any soul deemed worthy or willing enough. It is strange, then, that these so frequently intersect with those deemed wealthy enough, for the components for such a spell are beyond the means of most mortals. I have interviewed those who have made such a return, and in truth have found them to be of the most dull and unimaginative sort, that I cannot possibly imagine what it is they were so eager to return to. And I think that I read this already. If a true assessment of the journey is to be made, then there is simply no replacement for embarking upon it oneself. Perhaps one day this great volume of learning will make me worthy enough to walk that path, and wealthy enough to return. Yeah, I believe we read that one already. Alright, we got a gilded chest here. Bracers of Defense become the Bulwark. You gain a plus two bonus to armor class as long as you're not wearing armor or holding a shield. Really? Jeez. Well, that's <laughs> kind of a bummer. <laughs> kind of need armor. The Necromancy of Trap. Be cautious. Ah! No! Oh, 
Oh, yay! Thank God for my bonuses. All right, do I need to do anything to that? No. Okay, the necromancy of Thay. The book is locked tight with no visible keyhole, only an oval recess in the cover's mouth. The gem for the book, which we found. You try with to the examine the book, but the longer you stare, the more those piercing amethyst eyes draw you in. A cursed book. How obvious. Whoever opens it deserves the fate that befalls them. Curious. Why don't you take a closer look? I'll observe from back here. Sh Shadowheart is so catty. <laughs> Stephen Pierce says, uh, uh, Oxhorn bracers of defense are good for magic users such as Gale, Barbarians, and Monks. I mean, they wear, wear robes. Do robes not count as armor? Okay. We could drop the tome, ready to destroy it. We could tuck the book into our pack. We could leave the book be, or we can place the amethyst in the slot on the book's cover. Plop. Well, um, <laughs> let's open the book. Gail disapproves. The book's pull is irresistible. You feel changed, bettered for having opened it. Suddenly you are capable of anything. Filling mountains, darkening suns, conversing with the dead. Glyphs shift gently before your eyes. Words slip into your mind, onto your lips, forming words you don't understand. And something is trying to reply. Oh dear, we can pass a saving throw to turn the next page. We can pass a bard in performance check to drown the book's voice with verse. There was a young hero called Barry. Yeah, let's try that. We only got to pass a five here. Well, oh, they did it. I mean, that bumped us up to 22. <laughs> the glyphs swarm impatiently. The book wants you to turn the page, to delve deeper. It's hungry. We can again pass a barred performance check to continue singing, who had to best a tough quest and not tarry. It was going quite well till he fell under a spell. It's getting progressively more difficult. Again, a nine? Really? The glyphs seem to burn your inner eye, outraged at your denial. Within the pages, you feel a feral thrashing. Living magic, driven mad by what it was used for. Necromancy. The magical energies of all living things were stolen, corrupted, and sealed in this vile book. It wants someone to share in its insanity. We can again pass a bar check to channel our magic into the final line. Now poor Barry's got a hag he must marry. It's quite a limerick. Well, if I fail this, having rolled a 22 the first time, a 21 the second time, when I didn't need them, I'll be very pissed. Yay! A 30. Your limerick's final line pierces something within the book's roiling, vengeful magic. The voices falter, the anger quells. The magic seems to grow still and quiet, 
like a soothed beast. And we can now turn the page. Nothing. Just old parchment covered in arcane symbols. The magic sleeps. And close the book. The heavy cover thumps shut with a strange finality. So did we do good by passing all those bard checks? Hey, Galos is inspired. All knowledge is worth having. We got another inspiration for Gale. You've seen much of the book, but its most powerful secrets are guarded by indecipherable glyphs. Without a key, they may be locked away forever. Okay, well, I'm not sure what that did. I guess I saved myself from being harmed at the expense of losing affinity with, um, Gale. Though, in return, I got a bunch of Gale inspiration. Uh, but it said something about a key. Take the book, says chat. Oh, all right. Twisted binding. Alright, Chad is saying I'm gonna need the book later. Okay, well. There's the mirror that I went through. Is there anything else to this place? Really quickly before I head on out. Here's the storeroom. Did we there's another lever lever here? Oh, a rusted key. Do I need that for anything? Is that the key for the book? Although it's rusted now, it seems this key was once well maintained. It was precious to someone. Hmm. Twisted bindings look away. Oh, it goes even deeper. You already picked the lock that key went to. I see. Thank you, chat. All right, a ladder going up. Where will that lead? I guess we'll find out after we finish exploring. been here? We did. We were here. Well, then why was the door closed? Oh, because we went through there. Oh, and that was another way. I see. Okay. Well, I guess we go up. Right, we're three hours in. The only thing I wanted to do at the beginning of this broadcast was to get to the Githyanki crash. <laughs> we're still not there yet, but we did get a lot done so far. We've got an hour left. Let's see. I think we're done here. 
Uh, let's go up to... Uh, I don't see any fast travel markers around here. So we gotta go to the Risen Road. This is a long walk. <clears throat> I remember this. There's some baddies over here, right? Some wolves. Or hyenas or something. Daniel says, tip if you... Oops. Oh, a bunch of gnolls. Cramp. All right, um... I don't need to. I've, I've got... <laughs> Miss! I had a 45% chance. <laughs> All right. Without taking any damage. Daniel says, tip, if you get to an inferno, use turn-based mode. All right, will do. Turn-based mode, if I get to an infernal. What path lies before me? An open letter on oppression and peacocks. Well, that sounds interesting. Written in a furious, sloping hand, this is a letter to the editor of Baldur's Bash, a tabloid notorious for its controversial articles. Have we read something like this before? Dear editor, I find it despicable, nay, diabolical, that you would defend Baldur's Gate's ridiculous restrictions regarding animals in the city. We did read this before. Why, why do we have another note on this guy's body that we've read before? Okay. To the Githyanki crash. I'm surprised there's not a fast travel marker around here. Maybe it's over here. Yeah. I, where, somewhere around here. I found a waypoint. Where's the waypoint? It said waypoint discovered. Oh, Joaquin's Rest. It's right there. 
Ah, there it is. Okay. Can I not come back? All right, chat, tell me. Can I can I come back after I go to the mountain pass? You can come back. Okay. That's what I thought. All right. Flaming fist helmet. Constitution saving throws. Medium armor. Who would that be good for? Black, it's well be done. Oh, uh, she's already got one. Ready and willing. My faith will guide me. I should mind my staff. Hey, waypoint. All right, how big is this area? Oh, this is another huge area. There's the crash. But then what's that? Travel through the mountain pass. Towards Moonrise Tower? All right, let's go get the crash. Right, what's this way? Wait. These markings. Tirsu script scratched in the ground. A crash must be nested in the temple below. We must go there at once. Wait here for me. I'll return when I'm ready. I'll lead us there in my own time. We need to stay close if we are to survive. How do I know I can trust you people? Or Tursu script, you said. What does that mean? Githyanki writing. Every word a wheel. Every letter is spoke. The most powerful texts are engraved in slate. Some so ancient, only the most erudite Gish can read them. Pavel says, this border in no return for Grovex Goblin's quest. I see, I see. Well, I completed that quest. Okay, well come, let's go to the crèche. Very well, you may lead. But if we stray too far that our chance is lost, I'll make my way there alone. Journal updated the Githyanki warrior. Okay. Uh, but I want to see what's up here. Oh, doesn't look good. Oh, it's a cave. Oh, man. Dead civilians. Are we gonna come back here? Oh, this goes to the goblin camp. What? Quick save. 
All right, let's see what's on the other side of this. Oh, she's not going to leave my party, is she? <laughs> I'm just checking out the other side of this. I'm not going too deep. I did just do a quick save, so if she does try to leave... Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, we thoroughly explored that. No need to do so again. All right, so that was just an alternative through. path. So two paths that lead to the same path leading down. What's over here? Nice vantage point. Ruins over there. There's a plaque. Blessed be you, pilgrim. Take respite now in the dawn's loving gaze. Oh, that's nice. Ooh, I didn't... I guess I didn't understand that. I failed a saving throw of some sort. Yes? Who goes there? What? Oh. Just me. Hello, Lady Esther. Ah, a friendly face. Oh, you are a sweet, sweet blessing, my dear. You know, I've had nothing but trouble all day. I've been accosted, chased, insulted. Look over there. Do you see that wretched little hive? Lady, I'm busy. What do you want? We could say, uh, sure. Or it looks like a temple. Oh, it certainly looks that way. But inside, it is swarming uh -oh. with brutish, stupid, rude Githyanki. Brutish and rude by your wretched standards. But stupid, <laughs> chucky. Your charming companion would call it a crash. But it was built on what remained after the Githyanki slaughtered all of the monks. I'd call it a murderous training camp. Uh -oh. Acutely observed on both counts. Honestly, I was doing them a favor offering to buy one of their eggs. And how am I repaid? Attacked and run off like some transient. Do Githyanki lay eggs? God, that conjures an awful mental image. Mm. You tried to buy one of their children? What? No, of course not. I was merely... Well... Uh... Look, <laughs> it's just an egg. It's, do you want to make the an omelet? The Society <laughs> of Brilliance asked me to acquire one of their row so they can incubate it, and once it hatches... Raise the spawn in their tradition. Please, do enlighten me. What is this tradition? The society believes a Githyanki raised in a peaceful, nurturing environment can overcome its violent nature. I'm sure your friend would agree. A Githyanki is as likely to forsake its violent nature as a gnome is to fly. <clears throat> Interesting. We could say violence is taught, not inherited. You don't need to steal a child to know that. Or some things are in our blood. Only a fool would deny that. Or, well, you failed to get the egg, so I guess we'll never know. I 
I guess we'll never know. Perhaps you could help me then. I may not be welcome there, but surely a person with your charm and worldliness could get into the creche. And once inside, you could simply purloin an egg. I miss steal <laughs> one of Gith's own. I will slit your throat for even suggesting it. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> You'll be well compensated, of course. Just bring me an egg. We could say, sounds good, I'm in. Or do you have any equipment worth taking? Or we could pass a persuasion check to say, fine, but I want payment up front. Or, my friend is right. What you suggest is revolting and you need to die. Or, I'm not getting involved in this. Uh, I mean, I don't want to kill her. But I also don't want to steal the children of the Githyanki people. Oh, Cat5 says give her the owl bear egg, Oxhorn. Oh, yeah. Did I take the owl bear egg? I thought I did. Do I not have one? Is it in camp? It might be in camp. Uh, let's see. What, uh, I, I, I don't want to lose affinity with uh, Lizelle because I'm having a difficult time raising my affinity with her. So I don't want to. I don't want to say yes. It's considered a camp supply. You probably put it in a camp. Did I eat it? I didn't consume it when I did a long rest, did I? Oh, dear God. Um, we'll say I'm not getting involved in this. Pity. You'd have become rather rich had you the proper sense. Should you change your mind, you know where to find me. Did I accidentally eat the owlbear egg? No. No, that's not what I wanted to do. one of these sacks. Dark mind, slave mind, smoke powder, I don't see the egg. Is it in what? There's a search bar. Oh. I can't search. Well, if it is in here... I can't find it. 
Maybe I already... Oh! Owlbear egg! There it is! It was in one of my camp supply bags. Oh, that could have been an odd disaster. There we go. Owlbear egg. I'm glad I didn't eat that on accident. Whoo! Okay! given any more thought to the retrieval of that gith yankee egg? We can produce the owlbear egg. Oh, you wonder... Hold on. It looks different to what I expected. Are you sure that's a gith egg? Oh, um... <laughs> we could pass a nature check. The curves, the coloration, the size looks right to me. We only get plus two for that one. We could pass a deception check. No, but this owlbear egg is worth much more. And it can all be yours. We've got a plus four from that. Or we could pass a persuasion check to say, of course not. It's from an owlbear. But I bet your employers won't know the difference. And that gives us plus nine. Difficulty class 21. Oh, no. Uh, Voices of the Circle, plus two to Persuasion. Yeah, I gotta pass it. This is gonna be tricky. Oh, dear God. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I, I can do this. I can do this. Yeah! What was I worried about? Right up there, 34. Yay, Bard. What the society doesn't know won't hurt it. And we're left handsomely legacied either way. I rather like this plan. You have yourself an accord. Here's your payment. I'd hope it's enough to warrant your discretion, too. All right. We complete the quest and we save Githyanki babies. We tricked Lady Esther into taking an owlbear egg instead. She thanked us, and as a reward, we got 500 bucks. Yeah, yeah. And Lizelle has absolutely no reaction on this. That's annoying. Okay, what's the sign say? North, the North. Rosy Morn Monastery. West, Moonrise Towers. All right, well, that's west, so let's go to the Rosy Morn Monastery. Ah, this is a beautiful this place. This view's almost worth the walk. It's gorgeous. Wow, look at that. Approach the fairy in Lathander's grace. May his gaze shine upon you, pilgrim. Oh. We've got a, a gondola. Is that going to take us straight there? Yeah, I think it will. Maybe that'll give us a huge shortcut. Let's quick save. Might not be the time. Strength uh, 15. Ooh, this is going to give us plus 6 to strength. I've got negative 1 and plus 1. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to need that. Yankee Crash. 
No! I think it's yucking! Stop! 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 I left the one behind! No! Lazel! Ah, got it! Gotta go back! Okay, everyone aboard, please. That means you, Lizelle. Thank you. Okay, Rosie Moore and Monastery. Some crocus pilgrim stuff. Greater elixir of arcane cultivation. Gold. Potion. Pilgrim's prayer. Dear morning, Lord, and you are a dearie. Haven't I just the grandest time? Sure, if I was honey, I wouldn't have trouble getting down a hill. So warm and good I feel. I've been headed here to pay you homage and beyond on other business for some two odd months, and every mile has unearthed more and more kindness. For example, when my sleeping roll was infested with bedbugs, itching me disagreeably mourning, Lord, I have no qualms admitting it, a woman gave me a spare of hers, and it was so toasty warming of a night and she with two children of her own to tend. Anyway, thanks for pouring your honey heat over each and every day, cloudy or no, here for a lone woman barefoot and smiling on the long road. Then we've got a pilgrim's curse. Morning, Lord, you never rose up over nothing. You're just a stinking sham like all gods, dirty, stupid animals, all of you. Rutten pigs, rutten pigs. Wee wee, you ain't got crap on the absolute. It's beautiful, it's gonna stink you like the cheapest. Right, <clears throat> delightful. We've got another pilgrim's prayer here. Let's see what that one is. Good morning, Lathander. I suppose all mornings for you are good. You making them up out of all the bright bits of night and getting them shine-worthy and such. I have two new boys, Luke and Elliot, and I should like them to see lots of your nice sun-ups. So if you would watch over them, I should be most thankful. I am poor as muck, but I have some heart left to give. That which has not been eaten up by the boys and their mum. So that bit is yours if you keep them seeing sunrises. Thanks, Harrison Fields. Oh, I just realized that this is a shrine. Okay, yeah, I'm looting a bunch of stuff that was left here on a shrine to a god. Whoops, I hope the god doesn't come and get me. Sorry, morning lord, I stole your stuff. Okay, well, we still gotta get over here. We took... Quite a shortcut here. Did we? Yeah. We didn't have to go all the way around there. But uh, now... Hmm. All right, let's go up. We came up from there. North, Rosie Morn Monastery. All right, so that's the path we would have come from had we not taken the gondola? No. Uh oh. I what believe we're here? approaching the crash. Once we're inside, let me do the talking. Just to be clear, you're going to lead us into a nest of Gith Yankee marauders, and we're supposed to trust that will end well for us. Is that a problem? More a sign of the times, I suppose. They do not like each other at all. 
I see. We would have jumped across that. All right, so then we go down here. That's where we came from. Uh-oh. What did we what did we fail? We failed something around here. Ancient sigil. Waypoint discovered. Rosimorn Monastery. Why do I keep failing these saving throws? That's enough. On your feet. Where are you taking us? If this is about that weapon your friend was talking about, we don't have it and we don't know shit about it. Silence! Move! No. No, 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 I'm not going in there. I won't. Oh, no! Mada! Anyone want to join her? As I thought. Through the doors. Now! The captain is expecting you. Forward, carefully. These cultists have the crash on high alert. Oh dear. So they're Githyanki cultists. Hold on, I think I found a secret path over here. <clears throat> Pavel says a failed survival means a chest is nearby and you can dig it. Oh. <clears throat> well, I wonder what's down here. Elegant chest. Eee. Just arrows. That's it. Oh. We are taking the back way in, aren't we? Skeleton. Do we want to take the back way in? Odex says, uh, if you climb down the front of the monastery behind you, you can skip some fights and get straight to the crèche if you want to. Oh, thank you, Odex. <laughs> I appreciate it. 
I think, is that what I found? Is that it? I think, I think this is it, right? Okay. Is that it up there? All right, I'm gonna do a quick save here, just in case. Perception failed. Why? Hmm. What's that? A crumbling wall. Old maintenance records. Reminder to the caretaker when oiling the machine, make sure you don't grease the statues themselves. Stones become loose of late and has a tendency to slip. Novice Peron was rumored to have triggered a full spin once. Oiling the machine, huh? Gail didn't follow? Gail? Gail! Lovely day, this. For now. Yeah, well, why don't you stick with us, please? With ease. Okay, how do I knock this down? I suppose just hit it. Flackets will be done. I'm hurting my own guys here. All right, hold on. Looking ahead. Moving in. My faith protects me. Seek and you shall find me. Enough waiting. I crave blood. Hmm. Direct me. Step by step. Here we go. I've got a long road ahead. Is he hostile? Never wanted the easy path. A guardian of faith spell. And a remarkably long-lasting one at that. Okay, it's... it's I had to get within this ring, I think, yeah. It's only got 60.
Not outside of the ring, says chat. Oh. Another fight. Let's go. What? Cat5 says, Ox, you need the axe at its feet. Yeah, I looted it. Ceremonial battle axe. Do not go outside the ring, says Kimosabi. Whoops. Blood follows me everywhere. Okay, well, I I killed Barty Horn almost, <laughs> but we got through it. I need to hold on. My eyes grow heavy. Best to make up. No time to rest. Well, we're, we're going to go to camp soon, so let me try and save my resources here. Uh, all right. Uh, mugwort. Wisp weed. Gilded chest. Laura says, opposite ox. He hits you inside of the ring, not if you fight from outside of the ring. I think what was happening is that if I'm inside the ring, his attacks against me will also hit him. He died more to his own attacks than he did to mine. Lots of skeletons around this guy. Okay. There it is. Okay, so this is the other way we could have gone, I guess, through all the Git Yankee cultists. Stained glass window. Oh, I don't want to stand on that. Plaque. Dawn Master Seed. Dawn Master for Saeed. Dawn Master Welkin Glory. Ceremonial Longsword. Oh. Do I need to put the ceremonial axe somewhere? Dawn Master Seed. I guess that was bad.
Okay, uh, so we need to solve a puzzle, I guess. Click on the stained glass. I don't want it to break. All right. The monastery's notable keepers adorn these intricate panels. Oh, I see. Lathandarian monasteries of this size were usually overseen by dawn masters, esteemed members of the clergy. So sword in the middle, the left one is broken, but we've figured out that's the axe. And then there's a mace to the right. So we need to find a mace or a two-handed uh, hammer. Okay. Uh, are we stuck? Is it not advancing? Here we go. Uh, we could examine the image marked Dawnmaster Seed. The reconsecration of the monastery conducted by Dawnmaster Seed. Look at the picture of Don Mac Mas Don Master Stockhold. Even song before the Zenith Day, celebrated by Dawn Master Stockhold. Take a look at Don Master Welking Glory. Dawn Master Welking Glory beckons forth the rising sun in Lavanda's name. And inspect the broken. Dawnmaster Vasaid wielding. The rest of the inscription and picture has shattered away. Okay, so we figured out the axe goes there. We need a hammer to go here, and then some sort of magic item to go there. Uh, I guess we explore the rest. Ooh, old key. Guest book of Rosemoron Rose Abbey. Rosimon. A public guest book in which there are multiple handwritten entries from pilgrims who visited over the years. My home is as dark as my spirit. I pray that you will bring me light. Annual Kith Kithorn pilgrimage. Good to see your statue again, my lord. Never been here before in person. The stained glass windows are astonishing. We'll definitely recommend to others. Monks are friendly. We'll visit again soon. As a blacksmith, what an honor to see the four ceremonial weapons of the Dawnmasters themselves. I'm not a Lath Lathandarian myself, but I'd highly recommend it to anyone in the trade. The intricacy of the metalwork is astounding. Quick save. Oh, this just leads to the room where I got the axe. And this is the room I came from. Ooh, I can climb these knotted roots. bird up here. A giant eagle. Oh dear. <laughs> well, the, the, um, the narrator isn't talking. It said the giant eagle regards me with disdain. We could pass an animal handling check. To turn away from the eagle as we approach, indicating that we are not interested in its nest. Nat 20! The game is a lot more fun when I pass my dice rolls. I like this. The eagle seems satisfied, but keeps a watchful eye on you. 
Okay, I see. So instead of getting a Githyanki egg, I could have stolen an eagle egg, but I don't want to do that. Best be on my <laughs> way. There's the ceremonial warhammer. Oh no. I wonder if we can talk to it. No, what? What did I do? I didn't do it. Lizelle, for Pete's sake. Lizelle wandered into there. Doggone it. I bet you I can convince it to let me take the hammer. Because I don't want its eggs. I just want the hammer. So that's what I'm going to try and do. How much farther can I go? Hey, I, I cast animal handling. Just in case. Oh my God. <laughs> Glad I did it just in case. Eagle seems satisfied, but keeps a watchful eye on you. Speak with animals. Intruder! In my nest! This area was meant to be safe! Xavier, get behind mommy! We can just attack and leave. We can't talk. Okay, I am breaking up the party. Just in case. Don't waste a step. There are crystals here. Can't seem to do anything with the crystals. Well, lady, I need that hammer, and I can't talk with you, can I? You can pass, but you're not to talk to me. Gross. <laughs> Gross. Can I sneak up behind it? This calls for careful footwork. I just want a little look. Everyone saying about Oxhorn stealth? Oxhorn Quinty. stealth is pretty good, huh? That's what you were saying. I'm gonna quick save now. <laughs> yeah! Ox stealth! Okay, what's this? This is uh, holding up a newborn child.
What's down here? Rusty dagger, rusty longsword. Ancient Githyanki warrior. A Githyanki slate. Oh. Looks like a Githyanki, if the armor is anything to go by. See invisibility? What? What is going on? Scene? Gremishka. There's an opulent chest down there. What is going on? <laughs> Something is... Oh. Grimishka. Oh, there's rats down there. If I jump down, will I be able to get back up? Journal of a Novice Monk. There's rumors of a Githyanki sighting in the region. The Dawnmaster's inner circle think we don't know, but it's all anyone can talk about. What do they want? Can they be after the blood itself? How would they even have found out about it? Personally, I'm excited. If there really is a Githyanki attack, there's a chance they'll fire the lance to see the light of Lathander himself launched forth from Rosimorn's roof. That would be something to write home about. Brother Wellen claims he saw it once, and it was so bright it nearly made him blind. Luckily, he says it's quite hard to fire, but once we do, those Githyanki won't know what hit them. All right, so presumably they never got a chance to fire it. All right, if I open this door, a bunch of these rat creatures are going to attack me. They're invisible. A Gramishka. Magic allergy? They're allergic to magic? Okay, I'm running out of time, uh, so I don't have time to go any further. But I do want to solve, resolve everything that I've done so far. So let's hop back out of here. And I can jump out. Limber. <clears throat> I can keep going up. Oh wait, no, I can't. I can't climb these. Can I climb these? Twisting vines. No, I can't climb those. All right, well, I don't have time. I got to get out of here. So let's focus. All right, don't worry. Don't worry, pigeons. I will leave you alone. I'm not going to harm you. I got what I came for.
Okay, the hammer went over here. Sword, axe, hammer, and then some sort of magical item, I'm assuming, over there. I want to talk with Lizelle about what I found. The crush must be nested in that temple. Our cure is close. That's it? What happens if I give it to her? This is the third Githyanki slate that we've found. Do we need to have all three? It's not magic, it's a mace, says Kimosabi. Is it? All right. Well, save. Well, I don't know if it's that my characters are getting more powerful or that I had really good luck with my throws today, or maybe I'm just getting used to the game mechanics, but I had a lot more fun in today's broadcast. <laughs> than in some of the more frustrating earlier broadcasts. So I think we'll continue playing Baldur's Gate for the foreseeable future. I'm having a good time with it. But that's all we have time for today, so I'm going to go ahead and end here. We'll be back next week with another week full of live streams. Alan Wake 2 on Monday, more Starfield on Tuesday, more Baldur's Gate on Wednesday. But tomorrow is Scotch and Smoke Rings, and at the end of the hour-long Q&A, We'll play some more RoboCop Rogue City, which we've been having a lot of fun with. It's uh, cheesy in all the best ways, which is what I'm really loving about the game. So thank you for coming today. Working on a lore video for the weekend. Hope to have that done in time. If you haven't already, go ahead and snag the Oxhorn plushie. There is a limited inventory, and once they're gone, they're gone unless I decide to do another run, which um, would take a lot of time. So get yours while you still can. I believe it's pinned uh, in the shopping section of this broadcast, or you can find it in the shopping tab of my channel. Thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon with more lore videos and more live streams. Bye-bye now.